Hello, um, it's four o'clock and um, I'm going to start my talk in a very few moments. I'm just going to wait um, uh, to see who else joins me. I'm getting some messages on Facebook Messenger. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure who's here at the moment, but I'm just going to wait a few moments to see who um, who turns up and to give people time to join us before I start talking. Um, well, I'm talking now, but I mean giving my talk. If you want to type comments and say hello, that's great. Then I uh, know um, who's present and I can say hello. I will answer questions right at the end of the talk, uh, but very happy to say hi um, to people who are joining us. I know there's always a little tiny bit of a delay between people typing comments and me reading them. Anyway, I hope everyone's um, hope everyone's okay. I hope people are enjoying um, the, enjoying the spring weather. Um, if you're having spring weather wherever you are, I know I am where I am. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that kind of thing in the talk. Right. Well, we've got a we've got a couple of people joining us. Hello. I'm just going to leave it a tiny bit longer. Um, so a few more people can join us. It will stay on Facebook. So if you miss the very start of it, obviously, if you're listening to this now, you're not missing the very start of it, uh, but you'll be able to listen to it later. And it, I also put things on my YouTube channel, which I'll give some details about later. Hello, Becky. Nice to see you. All right. Yep, we've got six people with us now. And the numbers are going up, so that's really nice. Now, I will start because I tend to kind of start in the same way by introducing myself. Um, uh, so, yeah, I will start my talk now. And, uh, well, we're up to March already. And thanks very much to come to watch me listen to, um, watch me talk about magic for the month. Now, I'm Lucia Starza. I write a Bad Witches blog. I've written a few Pagan Portals titles for Moon Books, and um, I'll just show them. Uh, there's Pagan Portals Guided Visualizations, Poppets and Magical Dolls, Candle Magic, and I edited the community book Everyday Magic. And I'll be reading little bits from a couple of those later. Now, um, as I said earlier, I am doing this live, but it will be recorded, so you can always watch it later, and I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Um, it should take about half an hour. I know I overran slightly last month, uh, but it should be about half an hour this month. I better overrun, though, a tiny bit. Anyway, I, as usual, I'll be reading from some notes so that I don't forget anything that I intend to say. Oh, hi, Jane. Hi Jane, lovely to see you. Anyway, for me, living in England, March is the first month of spring. Now there are various ways of measuring the seasons and uh, the astronomical one, um, which a lot of pagans use, measures spring as starting from the spring equinox, which this year, 2021, is on Saturday the 20th of March in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, but the Meteorological Office in England measures the seasons as uh, covering three calendar months. They each cover three distinct calendar months. And so they reckon spring starts at the very start of, of the month of March. And um, personally, for me, that's what I tend to go by, um, really because that mostly matches what I see happening in my garden. It really feels to me as though spring starts at the start of March. It's when my daffodils start to bloom. I think you can probably see a few daffodils on my altar back behind me. Uh, it's also when I see the yellow forsythia uh, start to bloom on my hedge. And it's really just started to come out this last couple of days. I've picked a few tiny little blossoms of forsythia. Um, some of my friends know me making annual jokes about needing to trim my bush. I do, in my front garden. Anyway, 
Um, as I've mentioned in my previous talks, I'm very much a witch who likes to go by what I can see happening in nature when I'm celebrating the seasons. Um, although obviously the standard Wheel of the Year festivals are really useful if you're in a coven or you're meeting up with other people because it gives you a, a, a date that you can have in your diary where you all get together. So they're, they're really useful. But when I'm solitary, and let's face it, a lot of us have been solitary this year, I prefer to celebrate when it feels right. And so for me, this is really the start of spring. I will be celebrating the equinox as well, but I have really been feeling like celebrating the start of spring. Um, I'm going to talk about how people in the ancient world, how some people in the ancient world use the signs of nature in their spirituality. In everyday magic, the entry for uh, the 5th of March was written by Laura Perry and she's written a lot of books about ancient Minoan spirituality. She, she really knows a lot about it and has um, tried to uh, reconstruct what a lot of ancient Minoan um, spirituality might have been like. Uh, now she um, she believes that it was very much influenced by the seasons, the flowers that were blooming, and observations of animal behaviour. And um, if you're snake phobic, perhaps cover up your ears. I'm, I'm not going to show you a picture of a snake, but I'll mention one. So you might want to cover up your ears if you're snake phobic. But otherwise, um, listen. Serpent Mother's Wisdom. The Minoan snake goddess is a major figure in ancient Crete. This time of year, snakes in Crete emerge from their burrows. Call on the serpent mother to help you spring clean your life physically and spiritually. O oh, serpent mother, whose wisdom penetrates the world, Teach me to identify my own power and wield it well. Help me to discover the beauty in letting go of things that no longer serve me. And that was written by Laura Perry. Now, um, that seems quite apt, I think, as the weather is getting warmer and we are also starting to shed our winter clothes, um, replacing thick jumpers with lighter layers. Laura's words would be good to say as part of a ritual before spring cleaning and putting away wintry things, as well as for thinking about things that no longer serve us. And um, on the subject of spring cleaning, March is a traditional month to do that. And I'm going to look at methods of clearing unwanted energy from your home, a spiritual spring cleaning. Uh, this might be a bit back to basics for experience, which is, I do realise that. But it can also be part of the energy of the start of spring. It can be a good time to review our basic practices, the things that we take for granted, and perhaps think of ways of varying them or try out new ways of doing them. Now, ideally, a spiritual cleansing comes after giving your home a good physical clean and tidy, but do what you feel capable of. I do know that some books on witchcraft say that before you do a spiritual cleansing, you've got to completely spring clean your house from top to bottom. Well, I mean, in reality, that's not always possible. Obviously, it's really nice, but, you know, we're all pretty busy at the moment and, um, and some of us just don't have the energy for that. If you've got very little time and energy, then just do what you can. I mean, put a few things away, run the vacuum around if you can. Um, but, you know, do what you are capable of and don't feel that, oh, I didn't have the energy to fully spring clean my home, so I can't do the spiritual um, cleaning as well. You can, you can. It's just that it's, it's better if it comes after a, a bit of a clean up. Then... Um, clean yourself. Um, a shower or a bath is perfect, but if you're not up to that or don't have the time for that, then at least wash your hands. 
thoroughly now. I'm, I'm sure that everyone is in the habit of doing that now. Uh, but anyway, you know, it's always good to keep to wash your hands at least before you do a ritual or any magic. Um, now, then you clear your thoughts and you can do that by meditating or breathing in and out slowly at least three times. Visualize breathing out unwanted concerns, breathing in calmness and clarity. And then you can turn uh, your energy to um, clearing your space, um, clearing away unwanted thoughts and feelings and emotions and general unwanted energy from your space. And here are some methods I use. I'm sure you'll be familiar with quite a lot of them. Um, but it's always good to think of perhaps doing things in different ways. Now, first sweeping with a besom. Now, a besom, as I'm sure you know, is a traditional witch's broom. I think you can probably see one in the background behind me. The head's made of twigs. Birch, which represents new beginnings, is very good, and that's commonly used. Um, now, here are some birch twigs that I picked from my garden earlier. I've got a, birch, a silver birch tree in my garden. Um, and you can make, if, you, if you've got a silver birch tree in your garden, you can just make a bundle of, of birch twigs and use that to give a bit of a spiritual cleaning around the home. Now, I think it's always ideal to pick them at this time of year. Now, I was going to say pick them before the leaves start to come. Well, I, these ones I picked this morning, you, I don't know whether you can see there, but there are just tiny, tiny, tiny little green leaves starting to come on some of the little, um, some of the twigs. So I probably should have picked them a couple of days ago. But um, uh, here's a bunch I made into a little besom um, a couple of years ago. And you can see that I actually did that much later in the year and it had leaves on it. Um, now the disadvantage of having a besom that's got leaves in the end is that you actually shed more leaf, more dried leaves all over the place than do any sweeping. Um, it might be okay for a spiritual cleaning, but it's not much good for um, a physical cleaning. Now, hazel and ash is also good, as well as birch. Uh, they both represent magical power. Uh, you can still buy besoms um, at hardware stores or country fairs when we have them again. Won't that be nice? Um, they are great for sweeping up the leaves in the garden as well as for witchy stuff. I, in the little one I made, I used um, a little ash tree sapling. It was growing where I didn't want it in my garden, so I pruned it back and let the um, piece of the sapling wood dry. And I used that for the handle of my um, of my mini besom. To ceremony sweep the besom. Go around each room in an anti-clockwise direction, sweeping from the centre outwards and visualising unwanted energy um, being swept away. The anti-clockwise or deosol direction represents banishing, as I'm sure most of you know. So now, salt and water or herbal infusions. Salt is an ancient cleaning product. It naturally kills bacteria but it also has traditional uses in magical cleansing rites. Just put a pinch of salt into a bowl of clean water and you can visualize them being purified as you do that and dedicate them to the purpose of spiritually cleaning your room. Mix the salt and water and go around the room sprinkling as you go. That's sometimes called a spurging uh, based on the Latin word for sprinkling. So a spurging really just is sprinkling in Latin. Do be careful not to get on anything that's going to be damaged by salty water. Um, and a, a 21st century alternative is to put it into a spray bottle and just spray a fine mist around the room. Instead of salty water, you can use an infusion of cleansing herbs. One of my favourites is mugwort. It's a protective herb that grows naturally in England. Uh, there is a word of caution. You shouldn't use mugwort if you're pregnant. Other herbs that are suitable for cleansing infusions are um, rosemary and lavender. There are others, but um, I tend to use mugwort, rosemary or lavender largely because I um, 
I've actually got a huge amount of mugwort for some reason and um, lavender grows in my garden and um, I, I got given a quite a lot of rosemary as well so do use what you've got use things that grow in your garden ideally or that you can forage from the hedgerows uh, rather than buying it I mean you know if you haven't got anything by all means buy it but I'm kind of in favour of picking your own things I think it does add a little bit more magical energy to it when you pick it yourself and it's more environmentally friendly. Now, smoke cleansing. Many spiritual traditions use smoke to purify sacred space. And a traditional term for that is fumigation. And that's based on the Latin word for smoke. So fumigation means you're smoking your room. Um, and it can be done by burning herbs on their own, sticks of incense, or loose incense on a charcoal disc, disc in an incense burner. You can waft the smoke around your room. You can just waft the smoke with your hand. You can use a fan. You can have a fan that you ritually use for the purpose. Um, make sure you put your incense burner on something like a tile or a, um, a heat proof um, thing because you don't want to burn the top of your table or plastic. They get really hot. Um, obviously, you can buy loose incense. I mean, and you can buy ones especially for cleansing you, you there are recipe books you can get where you can mix up incense blends if you just want to burn simple herbs on their own again mugwort rosemary and lavender are, are great for the purpose if you're suffering from chest problems i wouldn't use a smoke cleansing and do make sure your room is quite well fumigated cleansing with light now this is actually one of my favorite methods of cleansing i, I mean i love candle magic as um, those of you who read my blog know and you can use a blessed candle to do uh, a cleansing um, you can um, um, you can bless your candle or you can use the light of the sun or the moon or you can use the light of the full moon to bless your candles so you can put your candles out under the full moon and ask the moon to cleanse and bless them and then use them, light them and carry them around your house to cleanse it with, with light. Uh, obviously, if you're using sunlight or moonlight, open up the curtains and um, visualise the light chasing away all unwanted energy. A candle, of course, you can carry around into the dark corners that sunlight doesn't reach. Um, I'm always very safety conscious, so it's best to put it in a lantern um, or a very secure holder if you're going to carry it around. Or you can put your candle on a flat surface and use a wand to vi um, visualise the light going around the room from your candle. I'm quite big on visualisation. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, but if it does work for you, it's great. Whatever you haven't got, whatever tools you're missing because you haven't been able to get out to the shops, you can always just visualise them. Okay, now, um, sound. Bells and gongs are a traditional way to clear unwanted energy from space. Go from room to room, ringing your bell, sounding your gong, pay particular attention to the corners of the rooms and you can point your bell in the direction you want it um, to go. Uh, if, if you can't physically get all around your home, then point your bell and again, visualize the sound going out into those corners. Um, now, there are, those are just a few of the ways of cleansing. What I would always say, and I, I've kind of mentioned this already, is try to use things that are made or grown locally to you if you possibly can for environmental reasons I'm, i think that's quite important especially if you're trying to pay attention to being in tune with the magic of the month being in tune with the things that are in season like um the things you use for for cleansing like um picking birch twigs it, it, it's quite it's quite a good um it's, it's environmentally friendly and it helps the spiritual practice so now i'm going to change the subject a little bit and talk about spring doll festivals last month i promised that um in march i would talk about spring doll festivals and folklore from around the world so that's what i'm going to do now 
and first of all I'm going to talk about Lent dolls which is a custom from Spain and Italy and I've got a picture on my um... now whenever I turn my Kindle around and try and show it sometimes it vanishes oh yes you can see there is a little Lent doll I think you can see that it's got some um... oh okay no it went really small didn't it and I've done my usual thing of managing to close down my notes so I'm going to have to open them up again it's quite useful reading notes from my Kindle but every time I try and turn it round oh here we are right there we go Lent doll Now, um, that doll that, um, in the picture is in the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, and it describes the figure as um, a quaresima. Do um, I apologise if my pronunciation is dreadful? I'm going to be pronouncing a few words and languages that I don't, I don't really know, and so my pronunciation could be dreadful, and I do apologise for that. Uh, so yes, they, they are hung up in houses and hotels, particularly in southern Italy. Now, um, obviously Lent is a Christian festival, but folklore isn't always pagan. Quite a lot of it comes from Christian traditions, and um, so I think it's worth mentioning. Now, we are currently in Lent throughout the entirety of March this year, up until April the 3rd. Lent dolls um, are traditionally made in Spain as well as Italy, they were often stuffed with an orange or a lemon or a potato and then they had stuck feathers into the orange or lemon or potato. Um, sometimes 40 feathers and sometimes only four. The dolls would be hung up in houses and children would pick a feather off. Presumably if there were 40 feathers they'd pluck one each day and if there were only four it would be one every ten days. Um, then at Easter, the doll would be burnt. Uh, obviously, that one in the Pitt Rivers Museum had quite a lucky escape. I believe that there aren't very many in museums, be purely because they, they weren't meant to last. They, they were made at the start of Lent and burnt at the end of it. Now, a doll tradition from Bulgaria is one I, I really like, um, and it's the creation of Martinetza, uh, uh, Mar Martinitsa. again I hope I pronounced that correctly and there's a couple that I've made there's one of my, one of my hairs attached to it there's a couple that I've made they're made to celebrate Baba Marta Day on March the 1st and Baba Marta means Grandmother March and these pairs of dolls uh, one red and one white um, which were like one male and one female traditionally made from wool and you could wear them on your clothing you could pin them to your coat or you could hang them on trees until the first blossom is seen if you tie the dolls to a fruit tree for the entirety of march it's supposed to ensure a good harvest for the summer so i probably should go out and tie them to my apple tree if you wear them on your clothing you're asking baba mata's blessing for an end to winter um, what I would say is if you are leaving anything on a tree outside longer than a few weeks, if you're just leaving them out until the end of March and then bring them in again, fine. But if you want to leave them there permanently, then do try to use 100% pure wool or some sort of yarn that is biodegradable. Uh, because if you do tie things to trees, it it's not great. It can restrict the tree's growth. Um, and it just doesn't buy a bit degrade. Animals can go and eat it and it will just stay in their stomachs. So try to use things for environmentally friendly if you're going to leave them hanging out on the trees for a long while. And obviously um, do check that it's permitted. If you're putting it on your own tree in your own garden, that's, that's fine. But if you're going to hang it on a tree somewhere else, uh, for example, as a sacred site, check that it is allowed because a lot of sacred sites really don't want things being hung up there. The pattern that I used for my little Martinetza doll, um, dolls comes from my uh, Poppets and Magical Dolls book uh, but you can find them online if you look for a tutorial online for making them you'll find it. 
Then on March the 3rd each year, Dolls Day Festival or Hina Matsuri, Matsuri um, again, I probably mangled that. That is celebrated in Japan. And on that day, mothers and daughters display a set of ornamental dolls representing the emperor, the empress, attendants, and musicians, all in traditional court dress. They're usually a set of dolls and they set them out on red fabric on like little steps or tiers uh, with the emperor and empress at the top. Uh, I'm going to show you, a, or try to show you, a picture of Hina Matsuri dolls at the v &A Museum of Childhood in um, East London, which I took a couple of years ago. Obviously, museums aren't actually open at the moment. Okay, I, yeah, I hope you can see that. Now, the information said that they're often quite valuable dolls and they're handed down from generation to generation and that celebrating the festival is supposed to bring good fortune to the girls of the household. And uh, the festival involves making offerings of food and drink to the dolls. Now, um, somewhat related to dolls um, are scarecrows. You might not think of them as dolls, but they are kind of similar. Now, they're traditionally put out in the fields when seeds are sown to stop the birds eating them. And in England, that's often from March onwards after the, the last frost. Now, you could make a scarecrow for your own garden as a guardian for anything you want to plant this spring. And you can be really inventive in what they look like, too. Um, I, I once saw a um, Dalek scarecrow in a field. Now... That would scare me off. I'm not sure whether the crows would would be scared, but you could be quite inventive. But most of them are look like people and you use old clothes, um, clothes that have seen much better days. And traditionally they were stuffed with straw. But um, if you don't happen to have any straw, you can stuff them with old pillows or uh, duvet filling or something like that, which um, is actually quite hard to recycle normally. Um, and um, often a pillowcase for that, a stuffed pillowcase for the face, and you can draw a face on and stick a hat on the top. And um, you can use like something like an old broom or a rake to put it on, or you could make like a cross of, of wood, like with a pole and a cross piece to, to hang your scarecrow on or to build it around it. Um, you could make mini scarecrows, little small ones, if you have window boxes or a balcony garden or a very small garden. And I, I'm on my blog today, I made up a tiny little spell, a little chant that you can say if you want to kind of magically enhance your scarecrow. Scarecrow, scarecrow, guard my seeds, keep my plants for me and the bees. If you, if you want to read those words again, you can go to my blog today um, and see it written down, www.badwitch.co.uk. Right, so now I'm going to get on to the equinox. And as I mentioned earlier, the equinox is on Saturday, March the 20th. The equinoxes are the times of year when day and night are equal. Um, and so it's a great time for balance. And in spells and rituals, that can mean magic to get more balance into our lives. Now, what I'm going to do is read a guided visualisation from my book, Pagan Portals Guided Visualisations, which I wrote for an equinox. And it's called Balance, the Seesaw in the Park. It involves imagining meeting someone who you perhaps might have had a disagreement with or a falling out with in the past, but who you might want to reconcile your differences with. Now, obviously, you can do that guided visualisation at any time of year if you think it's suitable, but this is a particularly suitable time. Now, as I said in last month's talk, uh, guided visualisations are journeys we make in our minds using a script created to help us experience a story that we're part of. And to do this, make sure you're in a safe and comfortable place where you won't be disturbed. Now, if you aren't anywhere suitable at the moment, say you're driving a car or something like that, you can just listen to it as though 
you're listening to a story but don't try to visualize it um you know obviously you don't want to do anything unsafe if you don't feel that it would be the right theme for you at the moment that's also fine you can just listen to it as you would a story but try not to really engage with it now um Ideally, guided visualisations are best done with the eyes closed, so obviously you need to be somewhere it's safe for you, your eyes to be closed. And first I'll ask you to take a few deep breaths, relax and close your eyes. And at points in the narrative I'll pause to let you continue the story to yourself in your own way. And that might be to visualise what's happening, or it might just be to imagine the words of what's happening. Everyone's different and um, there's no right or wrong way. So long as it's meaning for you, that's fine. Now I'm going to have a sip of water before I read. Balance, the seesaw in the park. Sit comfortably, relax and close your eyes. Take three deep breaths in and out. In and out. In and out. Then visualize the following. Visualize that you are alone in a beautiful park in the springtime. It's a lovely day. The sun is shining and it's pleasantly warm. Spring flowers are blooming in the flower beds. There's blossom on the trees and small green leaves are beginning to bud. Birds are singing, some are flying overhead, some are starting to nest. You feel safe and at ease here as you look around and explore the park. As well as the trees and flower beds, the park has lawns, benches to sit on, and paths to wander around and see the sights. Spend some time looking at what there is around you. After a while, you notice that there is a seesaw in one part of the park. Look at the seesaw. What is it like? Is it new or old? Even if it is old, you realise it is still working and completely safe to sit on. Walk up to the seesaw. There's no one around that you can see. But you decide to sit on one end of the seesaw. You sit down. It's a good place to rest, but you cannot operate it on your own. You wish there was someone else to sit on the other end and make it work. And then your wish is granted as you see another figure moving down the path towards the seesaw. You realise they are someone you know, a friend or acquaintance but one with whom you've had 
a difference of opinion, perhaps a disagreement, or even an argument in the past. Or perhaps there is just some small point on which you have disagreed. Nevertheless, as they walk towards you, you see that they are smiling both at you and at the seesaw. They sit down on the other end, look at you again and smile again. And together you operate the seesaw without speaking. Both of you are enjoying the motion of pushing with your legs to soar up into the air and then gently descending, repeating the actions with innocent pleasure. You are both enjoying the spring in the park and playing on the seesaw with childlike joy. Spend some time enjoying the seesaw. When you are ready, let the seesaw come to a stop, perfectly in balance, with you sitting on one end and the other person on the other end. And then the other person speaks. They say they are glad to have met you in the park and ask if you would like to walk with them and talk. Decide whether you want to. If you do not want to talk with them, then tell them so, and they will accept what you say and politely leave you alone. If you do want to talk with them, then you both get off the seesaw and walk together around the park. Visualise what happens now. If you decided to talk to them, spend some time walking and talking. Be aware of how the conversation moves between you and see if you can eventually come to some balance in what you are discussing. Start to bring your conversation to an end. You both say goodbye to each other. Do that in whatever way seems best before you turn and walk away out of the park. When you're ready, um, end the visualisation, return to normal reality, take a deep breath in and out, shake your fingers and toes and open your eyes to the real world. I hope everyone's all right after that. I hope everyone's okay. That is the end of the visualisation. Uh, after you have done any visualisations or magical work, it always ground to come back to reality fully and I always say something to eat or drink is ideal um, even if that's just a little sip of water um, if you 
haven't got anything to eat or drink, then you can um, tap your fingers on the table or stamp your feet on the floor. Now, if you're watching this live and have any questions, you can leave comments and I'll try to answer. I know it can sometimes take a bit of time for comments to come up. Uh, while I'm waiting to see if any comments come up, um, I will just give a little further plug for my books, which I always do. Uh, Pagan Portal, uh, sorry, that's Everyday Magic, a community book, Everyday Magic. Pagan Portal's Guided Visualizations. Candle Magic. And um, Pockets of Magical Dolls. And my blog again is called A Bad Witch's Blog and it's at www.badwitch.co.uk. And next month I'll be doing a similar Facebook Live talk uh, for April. Oh, the books have just fallen off the sofa. Um, comments? Oh, right. Hello, Richard. <laughs> laughing <laughs> Ooh, uh, yes mm. country fair oh yes oh i so want to go to a country fair yeah yep. Yeah. those three herbs very good ones yeah melted plastic yeah yes it really charcoal burners get really hot um i've got um some tiles like ceramic tiles uh, with felt on the bottom that i i use to put um burners on yeah support local absolutely Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Marinette's a yes. Oh, yeah. It was actually, uh, I used to pass it on my way to work. I was like, oh, that's so brilliant. I wish I'd taken a photograph of it. Oh, um, if I had to spring clean just one room thoroughly, well, um, I would say um, if you're doing magical work, then spring clean the room that you're going to do the magical work in. I mean, um, if I'm doing, I mean, when I was in a coven, um, we would always really thoroughly clean the temple space or the room that we were going to use for uh, that particular coven meeting. Um, but um, we really focus on that. Um, but I mean, it, it depends what you're going to do. I mean, if you're a kitchen witch, and then I would say your kitchen, I mean, obviously, it's always good to have the kitchen clean, isn't it? You don't want a minging kitchen. Um, but um, yeah, I'd say the room for magical work, if you're going to focus on one room, then clean the room that you're actually going to do the magic in. Oh, hello, Seldy. Oh, I'm glad you had an interesting experience of the visualisation. My books are haunted. <laughs> Falling off the table, yeah. Hello, Millie. Uh, oh, oh, I, I hope you're all right, Millie. Um, uh, an intense release of emotion. Oh, good, good, yeah. That I'm, I'm, well, I'm glad you had a response, and I hope you're okay. I would say that if you have had an intense emotional response, and people have said in the past that they've had an intense emotional response to the visualizations that I, I give, um, and to some extent, that is the the point of them. Um, they are supposed to help you help personal change and personal growth um but yeah it's really really important to ground after you've done a, a guided visualization for that very reason um especially and i i was a cup of tea and a bicky is my favorite okay right well um we've i've slightly overrun again and i hope i've answered all the questions so what i'm going to do is, is just say goodbye but thank you all very very much for attending and if you do want to watch it again and do the visualisation another time, it will stay on Facebook and I'll put it on YouTube. Anyway, bye.